teaching on stewardship. We address the subject of time. I want to begin by asking the question, how do you spend most of your time? Do you waste a lot of time? Do you procrastinate? Are you one of those individuals who are always late? Do you manage your time well? You know, every time I hear about time, I can remember the lessons, those proverbial sayings passed down to me from older generations. Mario, procrastination is the thief of time. Obviously, I didn't listen because I was still doing my essay in class yesterday. <laughs> I also heard the early bird catches the worm, right? Don't put off for tomorrow what you can do today. The devil finds time for idle hands. But this one, time waits for no man. One of the most important aspects of stewardship is time. And yet many of us, by biblical standards, really do not manage our time well. You know, many people spend hours working on the job six, seven days a week. But how much time do we spend in worship? Not necessarily at a facility or edifice, the church building, but in worship, period. Others of us, as I was told as a little child growing up, you will sleep your life away. Every minute of the day you want to spend sleeping. You know, I come from a tradition when my grandmother woke up at 5 a.m. She called her children and they then in turn came into our rooms and woke us up even if it was summer because they believed that you don't waste time. The Bible says that when we are lazy, that's called slothfulness. Perhaps many of us fall prey to spending countless hours before the television, talking on the phone, the computer, or these new video games. I'm wondering, do people still play solitaire on the job? <laughs> do people still surf the net on the job? Now, some of us are more constructive with our time. Of course, we spend time as family. We spend time in church. And some of us read, for example. But what is the quality of that time? Some of us are very consistent, but others of us are inconsistent. In the Christian life, time is of essence, and proper use of our time is important to God. Why? Because time is a gift from God. It is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verses 1 to 8, that reminds us there is a time for everything, a time to be born and a time to die. In other words, you see, that dash between when we are born and when we live is very important to God. What do we do with our time? This is important to God because as stewardship reminds us, we are not the owners of our lives. We are simply managers. And God wants us to manage our lives well. The Bible urges us, therefore, as the psalmist wrote in Psalm 90 verse 12, so teach us to number our days. Take every moment seriously and enjoy every moment of life. As Christians, we must exercise the proper use of our time. What does it mean to exercise the proper use of our time? It means first and foremost that we must recognize that we are on God's time. We are on borrowed time. And when we look at life from that perspective, everything falls into place. Because the proper use of our time requires a commitment and a proper relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. It is Ephesians chapter 5, verses 16, 15 and 16 rather, which reminds us, do not be fools, but be wise stewards of every opportunity, every time in our lives for God. You know what? Oprah said about success, it's when preparation meets opportunity. Always be prepared to give God our very best. How then should we spend our time as Christians? One, prayer. 
We must communicate with God. We must spend time talking to God. In the gospel today, Jesus reminds the disciples of the need to pray persistently, lest we lose heart. Now, this does not mean if we pray long and hard enough or we beg God enough, he will grant us the desires of our heart as the widow was granted justice. No. What Jesus is saying to us is that we must communicate with God regularly because life can be frustrating, life can be overwhelming at times, and we need that vital connection with him so that we do not lose heart. I am the vine, you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. We need to be in touch with God in order to be stronger, in order to be faithful, in order to survive. I like the cliche, we've got to pray just to make it today. So prayer. Two, Bible study. The lesson from Timothy tells us that all scripture is inspired by God, that we must study to show ourselves approved. Why? Because God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our paths. How will we know the will of God? How will we know what God wants for us unless we spend time reading and wrestling with God like Jacob did so that we can understand his will for our lives? We must spend time reading God's word. Three, we must spend time in worship. And by worship, I don't simply mean attending church, dear friends. Worship comes from the Latin worship, ascribing to God his due worth. And so worship is a lifestyle. Everything we do ought to be a form of worship. The way we speak to people, the way we interact with people, the way we treat people, we worship God. And that is how we enter his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. That's what it says, in our hearts. And if God is in our hearts, then everything we do, dear friends, is an outflow of that relationship that we have with God. So our time in this life should be spent worshiping God. And that is what St. Paul means when he says, we must pray without ceasing. We worship without ceasing. So worship. Four, fellowship comes from the Greek koinonia. It is a sharing together between persons and not just fellowship in the church. What I'm saying is that all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. God wants us to have fun. God wants us to interact. God wants us to socialize. That's how we meet people. The Jesus I know is a Jesus who went around from city to city interacting with people at the dinner parties. So much so that they called him a wine bibber. This man welcomes sinners, they say. We must learn to fellowship. How else do we nurture others? How else do we invite others into the kingdom of God? Jesus said in John 10 and 10, I am come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So our time is not to be spent only within these four walls. I love the saying, the church has left the building. In other words, the church must be out there interacting with people. You never know who you're going to touch whose life you're going to change if you don't interact with people. There is no such thing, dear friends, as a Christian closed off from the world. We must fellowship so that we can nurture love and increase knowledge of God in this world. Five, we must spend time witnessing. Now, a witness is one who has observed something and then reports on it. We are called to go into the world, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching all to obey the commandments of Christ. Matthew chapter 28 verse 19. But witnessing does not necessarily mean, dear friends, that we have to be knocking on people's door and shoving the gospel down their throats and telling them, if you don't do this, you're going to suffer. If you don't obey God's commandment, this is going to happen. No. I always tell people the greatest witness we can offer is the witness of our lives. The witness of our lives. The story is told of one of the great monks of the church, Pocomius, who was sent to prison. And in prison, he was visited by some other monks. And there was this atheist who lived in the prison as well. And he kept wondering, what was it? 
What was it about Pocomius that made him happy even though he was in jail? It was the witness that he received from the way those monks interacted each time they visited him. And this is what he said. See those Christians, how they love one another. The way we interact, the lives we live, will always speak louder than what we say. And so St. Augustine says, proclaim the gospel at all times. Use words only when necessary. Powerful. How should we spend our time? We must spend time resting. The Sabbath. Remember, God created the world in six days, and on the seventh day, he rested. Now, some of us, we don't know how to rest. That means we need to learn how to say no, <laughs> even to Father Mario sometimes. As much as I don't want you to say no, you must learn to say no. We must spend time resting because how else will we replenish? How else will we be able to give? If we are burnt out, we are no good to ourselves and we're no good to others. Jesus always found time to withdraw and to rest so that he can greet the crowds. Now I know there is some confusion about when is the Lord's day, when is the Sabbath, and I really don't have the time to go into it today, but I can assure you, it's not so much, dear friends, the day. The main emphasis, according to the Bible, about Sabbath is rest and worship. Sometimes we get caught up on the minor things. But what is the point Jesus is making with the Sabbath? Is that we need to rest and we need to worship. And finally, how should we be spending our time? With family. And who is my brother and my sister, says Jesus? Who is my neighbor? Of course, our immediate family, but our church family, and families we've created everywhere. Spending time with family is very important as well. And that doesn't mean that while we're spending time with them, we're on the phone, we're at the computer, etc., multitasking. It is about being present fully. It is the quality of time that we can give to our family that's important. That's what God expects of us. And so sometimes, why is it that we don't have services seven days a week? And why is it that every time the church door opens, we don't have to be here? And I shouldn't be saying that from the pulpit, but I am because this is what I believe. Because first there was God, then there was the family, then there was the church. The family is important to God. How can you say that you are taking care of the church? but you're not taking care of the family. Here's what I've learned in this Christian life. Charity begins at home. Spending time with the family is important. So I ask, have you been faithful in your prayer life, in study of the scripture, in your worship, in your fellowship, in your witness, in your Sabbath, in your family life? Perhaps none of us have been as faithful as we would like. But what stewardship is asking us is to assess how we are spending our time. Because more and more, dear friends, sensible people realize that it's not how long we live, but how we live that ultimately matters. The scriptures tell us, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And what God wants us to understand through stewardship is that he ought to be our treasure. And if he is our treasure, then our hearts, every minute of the day, will be spent worshiping God. Whether it's at home, at school, at work, at play. Because our thoughts, our actions, our speech will bring honor to him. May we then spend our time wisely and be good stewards. Amen. Amen.